Hello everyone, my name is V and I'm a research assistant in genetics and stem cells at the University of Cambridge. I recently received some comments and messages about my academic background slash journey to becoming a research assistant, so I thought I'd try and address it all in this video. The two key aspects I'll be covering include my education background, so my A-level subjects, undergraduate degree and master's degree. The second aspect I'll be covering is lab experience, so internships and also university research experience. So let's start off with my education background. For most of my life, I studied in Malaysia. Asia. In primary, I studied subjects in English and also Mandarin, but in secondary school, I studied everything in English. So I say that English grew to be my first language. After secondary school, I moved to the UK at the age of 16 to pursue A-Level. A-Level stands for Advanced Level Qualifications. It is a UK-based examination for students aged 16 and above. It's usually a duration of two years and it's split into AS Level, which is Year 1, and A2 Level, which is Year 2. Generally speaking, people take four subjects in their AS Level and then drop down to three subjects in A2 level. A levels in the UK is generally very focused. It requires you to choose a subject and almost decide on your career path at a very early stage. And I personally took four subjects for my AS and A2 levels, meaning that I chose not to drop anything. And my four subjects were biology, chemistry, mathematics, and art and design. I was considering dropping art, but it was a subject that I really enjoyed, so despite knowing that it'd be long hours of coursework, I decided to carry on for A2 level. For top universities in the UK, which are normally classed as Russell Group universities, your subject choice in A levels are really important. If you're pursuing STEM, for example biomedical science, you're often required to take biology as a subject. This is often paired with chemistry or math, and oftentimes both. My conditional offers for UK universities I applied to range from A star AA to AAB, with biology needing to be an A star or an A depending on the university. My firm choice was Imperial College London and my safe choice was Surrey. After my A2 level exams, my final grades were A star AA with an A star in biology, meaning that I met my requirements and got accepted into my firm choice university. If you are applying to UK universities, I also made a video on UCAS applications, so essentially how to write a UCAS essay. If you'd like me to make another video where I share my actual UCAS statement and dissect it all, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to do that. So this brings me on to my undergraduate degree where I did Bachelor's of Science in Medical Biosciences at Imperial College London. Medical Bioscience is equivalent to Biomedical Science, there was just a change in curriculum that year that I joined, hence the different name. Did I know that Biomedical Science was a thing that I wanted to do when I applied for university? No. Absolutely not. All I knew was that I really enjoyed biology and arts, but I decided on science because it was the more promising choice. And what I mean by that is if I ended up hating science in the future, I could self-learn and also take art lessons. But it would be more difficult for me to transition into a STEM career if I graduated with an arts degree. So essentially I chose a path that I'd regret less. Anyways, on to the actual degree. Biomedical science is the study of the human body and also human diseases, but at a much more molecular level. In knowing what normally happens and what goes wrong in certain diseases, we are able to research and develop treatments and cures to cure these diseases. My degree was three years. My first year covered topics in basic biology, chemistry, and statistics. So I learned about molecular and chemical interactions in our body, how to read and analyze scientific papers. We also had a statistics module where we were taught to use our studio to perform st statistical analysis. And we also had a lab program where we learned how to develop our own hypothesis, where we were trained in basic molecular biology techniques like PCR, Western blot, and cell culture. For me, this was the hardest module at the time because it was very new to us considering that none of us have actually held a pipette at that point. So learning the principle of each experiment was difficult, which also made setting up each experiment extremely difficult, meaning that we rarely got data because of technical errors. Now moving on to my second year where I had compulsory modules in genetics, cancer biology, and also a lab program. The electives I took were immunology, pharmacology, neuroscience, and microbiome. This this year built on existing knowledge and went in a lot more depth. For our lab program, we were divided into groups of six, where our project was to use CRISPR to generate a WIP1 knockout cell line. And WIP1 is a gene that regulates the tumor suppressor gene TP53. Using our own knockout cell line, we had to develop a hypothesis and experiment plan to look at something that we were curious about. And with the data that we've collected, we created posters, wrote a mock scientific paper with the usual abstract, introduction, methods, results, conclusion, and we also did a group presentation. For our third and final year, we started with three electives, and I took biology and aging, designing drugs for the 21st century, and global health. Then we went on to our six-month lab placement, where mine was based in Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London. My project was to investigate the role of necroptosis and fibrosis in ischemia reperfusion injury of renal allografts. 
Ischemia reperfusion injury, IRI for short, is an inevitable process of kidney transplant surgery. Blood vessels that supply the organ with blood, oxygen, and nutrients are clamped during the surgery. They are then transported in cold storage and then reperfused into the recipient. During this process, the primary form of cell death that occurs is necroptosis. And this leads to future issues like fibrosis and also poor renal graft outcome. So the underlying hypothesis of my project was that inhibiting necroptosis using a small molecule drug could inhibit fibrotic progression, which could ultimately lead to improved long-term graft outcome. For this project, we had to write a research plan in the first two weeks of our project. Then we also had to write a scientific paper. We also did a 10 to 15 minute presentation. And finally, we wrote a mock grant application using the data from our lab placement as preliminary data. Just to note, my project was actually cut short due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which meant that because my experiments ended abruptly, I didn't have enough replicates for my statistical analysis. Now that I've talked a little bit about my university research experience, I'd also like to mention internships. I only did one summer internship during my time in university, and in hindsight, maybe I should have done more to boost my CV. In my second year of university, around December, I applied to a few internships within the UK and also Europe, so places like Francis Crick, Vienna Biocenter, etc. I got rejected by all of them, and then I continued applying to a few places in Malaysia as well. I applied to Cancer Research Malaysia, got shortlisted sit for the interview, did that, and then landed a position. I was expected to start in July, and this would end around September. It was a dry lab project where I used R to map out the genetic immune landscape of oral cancer patients to identify groups of patients that would better respond to immunotherapy. Essentially, what I did was go through large genomic data sets, identify immune-related genes, use R packages like differential gene expression, do the analysis to identify genes that are highly or lowly expressed in patients that respond better to immunotherapy immunotherapy, and then plot and present this data on heat maps and also volcano plots. It was a really good experience for me because I didn't have much coding experience in university, so this definitely helped to strengthen my CV. And personally, I think that regardless of which STEM subject you choose to pursue, any sort of coding experience is definitely valuable. So as mentioned previously, my undergraduate project was actually cut short due to COVID-19. So I felt like I didn't have sufficient experience to pursue a PhD or apply for a job. I also didn't quite know what I wanted to do with my life at that point, and I also wasn't sure if research was the thing for me. So my next best bet is to do a master's. Thankfully, I received a partial scholarship to continue my master's at Imperial, so then I applied to a master's of science in genes, drugs, and stem cells, novel therapies, did an interview, and got accepted. Because I did an MSc and not an MRes, my course was half taught and half lab-based, whereas an MRes would be entirely lab-based. My first few months of my MSc was entirely online, and I was doing this in Malaysia where there would be a seven hour time difference because of COVID lockdowns. I attended lectures in gene therapies, stem cells, and pharmacology, and I decided to do my advanced module in pharmacology where I learned a lot about drug commercialization, patenting, and also drug development. I actually really enjoyed the business side of science, which I think that is something that a lot of academics don't really talk a lot about. The second part of my MSc was a lab project. I really wanted to do this COVID-19 based lab project, but I didn't end up getting my first choice because everyone's lab projects were allocated randomly, so I ended up being allocated to a project based in the bioengineering department. But that actually worked out really well because that was always a side of biomedical science slash biotechnology that I was really curious about. My project focused on developing a cellular-based therapy to try and deliver nitric oxide-producing cells into the trabecular meshwork of the outflow pathway in mouse eyes to try and lower intraocular pressure in glaucoma. My supervisor was American and he had a little bit of a different supervising style to what I'm used to in the sense that it was very hands-off and more macro management. But this actually worked out really well because it taught me how to be really proactive with driving my own project and also doing a ton of self-research to direct where I wanted my project to go. Despite having a slow start to this project because I had to fly from Malaysia to the UK with all the COVID restrictions and also my lack of background in bioengineering so I had to do a lot of reading, it meant that I ended up not generating enough data for my dissertation which meant that I actually got a lower grade than I expected, but all in all I'd say that it was a great learning opportunity because I learned how to develop my own research project, learned how to look up the different reagents and where to order them, and also how 
able to seek for collaborations with other groups within the department. Whilst I was working on my master's lab placement project, I was also considering next steps. I was considering doing a PhD, but at that point many programs have closed and I also wasn't 100% sure of the type of project that I'd like to pursue. So my next thought was that maybe I should start working first. And maybe working in research can help me determine if research is really the thing that I want to do in the future. So I just applied to a bunch of jobs at the time. I didn't even know what the difference between a research assistant or a research technician was. I wasn't even aware that I couldn't apply to certain biotech companies because if they weren't a licensed sponsor, they couldn't sponsor an international student. So I believe I sent out about eight to 10 applications at the time. And for those few applications, I got invited to an interview for four of them. The first two I got turned down for, but the third one was the charm and it's the current job that I'm working at. And after accepting that offer, I turned down my fourth interview. I received my job offer around April slash May and was expected to start around August slash September. So I was really fortunate that they were willing to wait a few months for me to be able to start working. So that's sort of my entire academic journey that led up to where I am today as a research assistant. I hope that you found some of this helpful and also to note this is obviously not the only set path. There are many other different ways. It's just that this was my experience. And looking back, I'm able to connect the dots a little bit more. And if there's one key takeaway slash advice from this video, I'd just like to say that be open to new opportunities. Take opportunities as they come and don't be so rigid if it's not something that you were originally wanting to do. Because at the end of the day, every experience is worthwhile in the long run and you'll definitely look back being able to connect the dots a lot more than looking forward. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below or drop me a message on my Instagram at biomedwithv where I also post a lot more short form content. So thanks again and see you in the next video. Bye!